Hello and welcome once again to the Woke Africa Show. If you're new on this channel, please subscribe and stick with us. Uh, to our existing subscribers, we say kudos, kudos, kudos and well done. Thank you so much for supporting this channel, for sticking by us. As you know, my name is Ejewa and I'm the host of the Woke Africa Show. Today's edition is promising to be beautiful, to be fantastic. Um, we've got juicy stories for you, so I entreat you to watch to the very end to support the channel. If you enjoy the video, please give us a thumbs up and then share so that everybody will benefit from it. Thank you so much and, you know, we'll be right back. I watch CNN, I watch Fox, I watch CBS, and in this case, there's a lot of things not being said. It almost certainly is a recombination event that, that was laboratory driven. This is just the essential nature of Chinese communism. Chinese communism is evil. Every person it harms is directly attributable to the Chinese Communist Party. I began looking into the origin of the now widely known coronavirus in early February, with its timing amid the Hong Kong protests, the Taiwan elections, and the U.S.-China trade deal. My name is Joshua Phillip. I'm an investigative reporter at the Epoch Times in New York, writing about the Chinese Communist Party's programs of espionage and unconventional warfare for well over a decade. Videos and messages from Chinese citizens leaking through the censorship suggested the situation was much worse than what the regime was reporting. As my research progressed, initial answers turned into more questions. I soon realized there was much more to the story than we were being told. Today, the coronavirus is impacting over a hundred countries around the world. Billions of lives are at risk. And from what is said by the Chinese Communist Party, this allegedly started spontaneously in the seafood market in Wuhan, China. Wuhan is the capital of Hubei province, the largest city in central China. Huanan Seafood Market is located in Jianghan district of Wuhan city. It is a large comprehensive market that includes pork and a variety of frozen seafood, flavored spices, as well as some game meats. The first thing that received public attention about the epidemic was an internal notice from the Wuhan Health Commission. There has been a continuous occurrence of pneumonia cases of unknown cause. The notice issued on December 30, 2019, clearly required all medical units to report similar cases of unknown pneumonia. The notice started spreading online, and on December 31, 2019, the Wuhan Health Commission issued a public notice for the first time saying that some medical institutions found a link between the pneumonia cases and the Huanan seafood market. However, the notice pointed out that there was no evidence of obvious human-to-human -human transmission and no infection among medical personnel. On January 1, 2020, the Huanan seafood market posted a notice of closure. This was followed by a thorough cleanup of the market, which as an investigative reporter seemed rushed. Guan Yi, a well-known Hong Kong expert, echoed my concern that the move was like destroying a crime scene. Since then, Wuhan officials have repeatedly said that most cases of pneumonia in Wuhan have a history of exposure to the Huanan seafood market. On January 26, the Institute of Virology of China CDC announced that 33 of the 585 environmental samples from the Huanan seafood market were found to contain the novel coronavirus nucleic acid and the virus was successfully isolated from the positive culture samples, suggesting that the virus originated from wild animals sold at the market. At this point, Huanan Seafood Market being the source of the epidemic became an official conclusion. A few days later, however, a report from the journal Science published online 
challenged that story. The report cited a paper in The Lancet, one of the world's top medical journals, and questioned whether Wuhan's novel coronavirus pneumonia could not have originated at the market. The paper titled, Clinical Features of Patients Infected the 2019 Novel Coronavirus in Wuhan, China, was published in The Lancet on January 24. The first author of the paper is Huang Chao Lin, Deputy Director of Jin Yin Tan Hospital, the first designated hospital for treatment of unknown pneumonia in Wuhan. Why would this come as a challenge to the official narrative? I think this journal article is very important. It reveals a lot of important information. For example, this paper talk about the first patient onset was actually on December 1st. This patient is not related to Huanan Seafood Market. And also, no epidemiological association was formed between the first patient and subsequent patient. And then also on this paper, I talk about on December 10th, there were three more onset cases, two of which were not related to Huanan Seafood Market Wholesale. Major discoveries that a total of 41 patients were counted in this paper, and 14 of them proved to be unrelated to the seafood market, accounting for more than one third. No one sells bed at the seafood market too, and the official from CDC did mention they find any bets in the seafood market too. Certainly the Lancet paper showing that supposed patient zero was nowhere near the market. Secondly, that there are no bats in the seafood market or anywhere close. The idea of the spread so fast through a population, just the way it was said through the seafood market, is highly unlikely and improbable. On January 29th, The Lancet republished an analysis of 99 confirmed cases at Jin Yin Tan Hospital, of which 50 had no history of exposure to the seafood market. According to the New England Journal, of the 425 cases confirmed, 45 cases onset before January 1st had no history of exposure to the seafood market. Notably, the authors of the two Lancet papers in the New England Journal of Medicine are doctors and medical experts in mainland China. Daniel Lucy, an epidemiologist at the University of Georgetown, said in response to the Lancet paper that if the data were accurate, the first case would have been infected by the virus already in November 2019 because of the incubation period between infection and symptoms. This would mean that the virus was quietly spreading between people in some parts of Wuhan before the cluster of cases with a history of exposure to Huanan seafood market began on December 15. The first expert group from the National Health Commission arrived in Wuhan as early as December 31, 2019. The expert panel established a set of diagnostic criteria. After investigating Jin Yin Tan Hospital of Wuhan that stipulated a history of contact with Hunan Seafood Market, the person having a fever, and displaying the whole genome sequence. All three standards have to be met to confirm a case. This standard was used until a second group of experts, including Zhang Nanshan, arrived in Wuhan on January 18th and made a revision. Why did the panel impose a history of seafood market exposure as a criteria of diagnosis, knowing that at least a third of the cases were unrelated to the seafood market? They clearly know about 14 patients not related to Huanan seafood market at all. That clearly means there's another source of outbreak. I think somehow this could be a malfeasance or somewhat intentionally cover up some important source of infection. It can go a long way to covering up the actual source by imposing a false place and you're not looking at the actual victims, then you're only allowed to find your keys under the light post. The numbers that we're getting from China about new infections and deaths are highly suspicious. We know that Beijing for six weeks in December and January suppressed information of the epidemic. And then when they officially acknowledged it on January 20, they then started a campaign of suppression of information. We know that because the central leading group that was announced on January 26 has a nine person roster and it's very heavy with propaganda officials. Indeed, the vice chairman of the group 
is the Communist Party's propaganda czar. It appears that uh, the party's main goal here is suppression of information, controlling the narrative. That's more important to them than actually ending the epidemic. I was in China when SARS happened, and we were evacuated, and it's the same, it was the exact same thing. There's no transparency. They tried as, as long as they could to cover it up until finally it was just like with the coronavirus, they could no longer cover it up, and then they proceeded to act. I mean, I think from my perception back then, their response to it is exactly the same. On January 10th, China disclosed the full genome sequence of the Wuhan novel coronavirus, and many of the world's top virologists began analyzing it. As early as January 7th, an academic Zhang Yongzhen from the National Institute of Communicable Disease Control and Prevention, along with the School of Public Health of Fudan University, submitted a joint paper to Nature. The paper was published on February 3rd and pointed out that the Wuhan coronavirus is closely related to COVZC45 and COVZXC21, two viruses sampled from bats in Zhushan by the People's Liberation Army. The Wuhan coronavirus has an 89.1% nucleotide similarity to the COVZC45 virus and even exhibits 100% amino acid similarity in the NSP7 and E proteins. Shortly after the paper was published, other scientists used BLAST, a program developed by the National Institute of Health and the National Center for Biotechnology Information, to compare the viral sequence based on the data submitted by Chinese authorities on January 12th. The results matched with Zhang's findings. Another scientist, Lu Rao Jian from the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention and their team also published a paper in The Lancet on January 30. The paper stated that the Wuhan virus has an 88% similarity to two bat-derived SARS-like coronaviruses collected in Zhushan, Zhejiang province of China. The earliest discovery of this bat-derived virus is by an expert from the Research Institute for Medicine of Nanjing Command. A paper published in 2018 states that scientists from this institute detected many SARS-like coronaviruses in bats from Zhushan City, also known as bat-like coronavirus, Zhaoshan virus. In short, scientists found the Wuhan coronavirus, the current pandemic, is highly similar to a bat SARS-like coronavirus previously discovered by the Nanjing Military Research Institute, showing 100% amino acid similarity in NSP7 and envelope protein, the E protein. What does this high similarity reveal? Hard to see uh, proteins 100% identical when the virus jumps species. And so that was suggesting uh, maybe the virus could be generated with a reverse engineer process. I certainly believe that the 100% amino acid sim similarity says it can't possibly be a natural mutation. It almost certainly is a recombination event that, that was laboratory driven. On January 21st, researchers from the Institute Pasteur, Shanghai, Chinese Academy of Sciences published a paper in Science China Life Sciences that mentioned an important phenomenon. The sequence of a key part of S protein of Wuhan virus has high homology with the SARS virus. What are S proteins? In the well-known coronavirus picture, they are little mushrooms attached to the surface of the virus. These S proteins, also known as spine proteins or spike proteins, are the most important tool for the coronavirus to invade human cells. If we compare the receptor ACE2 on the cell surface of human bodies to a lock, this S protein is the key, which can unlock this lock on the cell surface and then invade into the cell to propagate and destroy it. That means 
virus now can infect human cells much easier. And uh, that's probably also one of the important reasons that contributing to multi-organ failure when people have a very severe disease. So it can spread out in the human body much faster. Well, the S proteins, the, that the, the high similarity of the S proteins from SARS, one to now SARS-2, that's your spike protein. That's the lock and key. That's going to be what uh, drives it right through human cells. And so we know that's the pathogenic spike protein that for the original SARS. So now you're allowing that access to human tissues because the spike proteins of the natural evolutionary strains don't infect human cells at all. So that research has been going on at Wuhan and published since 2007. And clearly, if that spike protein from SARS weren't on the COVID, the new COVID-19 or SARS-2, it wouldn't be able to enter human cells. So again, this is again evidence that it couldn't go through the Wuhan seafood market because how did you get that spike protein off the original SARS from bats or any other way? It's lab derived. Research into the virus genome sequence revealed many essential data points. According to a February 28 report in the South China Morning Post, the Shanghai P3 laboratory, which first shared the Wuhan coronavirus genome with the world, was ordered to close by authorities, impeding further research on the virus. Professor Zhang Yang Zhen and his team, who published the genome sequence on January 11, worked at this laboratory. According to a February 26 report on Chai Xin, Zhang Yang Shen's team isolated and completed the genome sequence of the previously unknown virus on January 5th. On the same day, the Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center reported the discovery to the National Health Commission and recommended prevention measures. No response was received as of January 11th. And it was then that the team decided to publicize the virus genome sequence on virological.org, becoming the first team to do so in the world. Chai Shin also reported that the Hubei Health Committee already notified genome sequencing organizations on January 1st regarding the cessation of analysis of Wuhan virus samples. Existing virus samples must be destroyed. Information on the samples, related to papers and related data, are all prohibited from release. On January 3rd, China's National Health Commission distributed Notification Letter 2020 Number 3, in which a similar directive was presented. Afterwards, the once active Chinese scientific community suddenly fell into an eerie silence. What was the Chinese Communist Party trying to hide? This is telling us the Chinese government is censoring this information. They do not allow the samples to be sequenced or do not allow the sequence to be published or submitted to the gene bank. Its response to this virus is extremely troubling. It ignored it for six weeks. It allowed it to spread around China. It tried to get other countries to not protect themselves. This is dangerous, irresponsible behavior, and it's endangered not only the Chinese people, but people around the world. There is no other way of looking at it. They are responsible for the continuation of this coronavirus. And every time it comes back, because it will come back, because it's going to be with us now permanently, it will come back and every person that it kills, every person that it harms, is directly attributable to the Chinese Communist Party. Through investigating the genome sequence, I found it significant that the S protein of the Wuhan coronavirus was critical in its cross-species ability to infect humans. While I was searching for related studies online, one Chinese virologist in particular caught my attention. She spent many years researching bats and coronaviruses. She was the first to locate the key to how coronaviruses can overcome cross-species barriers in order to directly infect human bodies. And she was the first to discover that the SARS virus was the result of a restructuring of multiple SARS-like coronaviruses found in bats. Her name is Shi Zheng Li, and she may be an important link to the origin of the virus. Wikipedia describes Shi Zheng Li as a, quote, Chinese virologist and researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, 
which is part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Further investigations show that Shi Zhengli has been a figure of controversy since the Wuhan virus outbreak. This is due to a paper she published in 2015 discussing her own research into synthetic viruses. Chai Xin, a media company with ties to the Chinese Communist Party, interviewed Shi Zhengli in an attempt to refute these rumors. Dr. Zhengli Shi is one of the top experts in China uh, studying about coronavirus. Uh, in Wuhan Institute of Virology. She has so many publications from uh, collecting, identify bad coronavirus from bad caves. Her lab has these capacities, and very sophisticated capacity to generate mutations to make it best fit in human expression as well. Delving further into related information, I discovered that Shi Zhengli published not one, but four papers in total, each of which contains important information. Since the SARS outbreak in 2003, Shi Zhengli has been conducting research on coronaviruses. From 2010 onward, the focus of Shi and her team was redirected to identifying the capacity for coronavirus transmission across species, specifically putting the spotlight on the S protein of the coronaviruses. In other words, her team's research in the Wuhan lab has been looking into the part that can make coronaviruses transmittable to humans. In June 2010, a team including Shi Zheng Li published a paper. It describes research to understand the susceptibility of angiotensin converting enzyme 2 ACE2 proteins of different bat species to the S protein of the SARS virus. In the experiments, they also modified key amino acid condoms to mutate the bat's ACE2 to examine compatibility with the SARS-S protein. This paper demonstrated their awareness of the special relationship between the S protein and the ACE2 receptor. It also signified that she had unearthed the passageway for coronaviruses into human bodies. In October 2013, she and her team published a paper in the authoritative science journal Nature. They claimed a breakthrough in coronavirus research. What was their breakthrough? They successfully isolated three viruses from bats, one of which had an S protein that integrated with human ACE2 receptors. This effectively demonstrated the human infection of SARS-like viruses to humans without the need of an intermediary host. Then, in November 2015, she and her team at the Wuhan lab once again published a paper, this time in the British journal Nature Medicine. They discussed the creation of a synthetic virus, a self-replicating chimeric virus. This virus had the SARS virus as the framework, with the key S protein replaced by the one they had found in a bat coronavirus she mentioned in her 2013 paper. This new virus demonstrated a powerful ability for cross-species infection. The mice infected with this synthetic virus revealed severe lung damage with no cure. This symbolized that Xi's successful splicing of the SARS virus was a key to open the door to the cross-species transmission. What is startling is that these successful experiments on mice were only the tip of the iceberg. They planned to further experiment on primates. Although Shi Zhengli did not indicate any conclusion from this research, her move to research on primates suggests this was to more closely simulate the infection of humans with this new synthetic virus. This wasn't done without controversy, however. Shi's experiments quickly triggered widespread debates from the academic community. Simon Wayne Hobson, of the Pasteur Institute in France expressed deep concerns. He told Nature, if the new virus escaped, nobody could predict the trajectory. Propagation could happen anyway. His statement is exactly what's happening, that the virus is everywhere, and it could not spread that fast through various countries unless it's been spread via laboratories, via the mail, via research scientists studying that. 
additional studies very strongly support the idea that this new coronavirus came from a recombination event, that is a cutting and pasting of two different viruses. So her work proves or strongly supports the hypothesis that it could not possibly have been generated in a natural zoonotic transmission, but had to come from a hospital setting, the laboratory setting almost certainly, the biosafety level for Wuhan research facility. However, this did not terminate Xi's research. On November 14, 2018, Xi Jingli spoke at the School of Life Sciences and Biotechnology at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. The topic was bat coronavirus and its cross-species infection. Reports of this event have since been deleted from the university website. I discovered two more significant pieces of information regarding the dangers of the research conducted by Xi Zhengli's team. First, on October 16, 2014, the Obama administration, wary of the potential threats to public health from the gain-of-function GOF research into SARS, MERS, or influenza, announced through the National Institute of Health that it was suspending funding into similar research. The funding pause included Xi Zhengli's research project, Genetic Engineering of SARS-like Coronavirus in Bats, a collaborative effort with Dr. Ralph Barrick, a virologist at the University of North Carolina. Second, after the Wuhan outbreak, Indian researchers compared the S protein sequence between 2019 NCOV and SARS. They discovered that 2019 NCOV had four new sequences inserted, all of which can be found in HIV sequences through a search on GenBank. Xi Zhengli discredited those observations, although she never denied the existence of the four inserted sequences. However, scientists probing GenBank found that there were only three viruses containing all sequences. The first is the HIV virus itself. The second is a bat coronavirus discovered by Xi. And the third is this new Wuhan coronavirus. We've done this kind of work for now 40 years for me. There's the sequence analysis and comparison of the virus of the SARS-2 COVID-19 apparently has genes that come from other human and other species, including some envelope, the GP41 from HIV. What is the HIV's GP41? The answer I found online describes GP41 as a protein of HIV that acts as the key to infecting human bodies, resulting in the functional failure of the immune system. If the discovery by Judy and her colleagues are established, it would mean the infectious part of the Wuhan virus, the S protein, incorporated the sequence of the HIV key protein. This made me think of the immunodeficiency symptoms in people infected. They were doing research on a human transmittable coronavirus that was actually published in a paper. So this is research that they actually published. They were working on developing a coronavirus for the human host, which you know leads you to question, why would you be creating a coronavirus that can infect humans? What would be the purpose of that research? Is it, is it for a weapon? Is it so that you can then create a vaccine that you are the sole recipient of the profits from. The Chinese have full access to our databases. They have full access to all that research that comes out. They have full access to all our universities that train their scientists. And they have full access to our scientists, like was, you know, with the recent indictment of the uh, head of the chemistry department at Harvard. I mean, this is a thousand talents program. Tens of thousands of, of the most, uh, of the world's most brightest people in all of these different um, areas that are going to China to help them with their programs. And all of these programs, as you know, have a dual-use capability. Beijing's attacks on the United States, which have occurred for weeks and weeks, are really worrying. What it shows is that China is desperate, and the United States needs to defend itself because China is propagating this narrative that we spread the coronavirus to China. So the United States needs to just come out with the facts about how China took coronavirus samples from Canada and the United States. They sent them to Wuhan, 
We don't know exactly what went on in that lab there at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but it's time for the United States to defend itself. January 23rd, 2020. 